Alec Gunn is a junior at the University of North Florida studying civil engineering. I was like probably like six or seven. My sister and I would watch this show on TV, Overhaul, and they would take cars and like they would steal them away from people and it was this like prank show but they would totally restore the vehicles and it was amazing. That's like a really old like hot rod show like that was been on for years. It's like one of the first like really great hot rod shows and car shows and we watched that and I'm like six, seven, eight. I don't really know what's happening but I just like, like the idea of a cool old car. So that's, I think, where it started. Um, after I got my license, I've had like an economy car for a while, but I like to do truck stuff, which I, it's pretty much like all the stuff I do. I like to move things, I have a boat, I wanna tow my boat around, I wanna pick items up, I wanna go do yard work for somebody. Like having a truck to throw like tools and lawn equipment in the back is just perfect. So a couple years ago, I was like, I can start looking for a truck. And that's kind of where it started, but I like the idea of doing like an older, vehicle something that's cool build something that that sounds good and it's actually fun to drive you know because driving sucks so might as well make it you know, enjoyable it took like eight nine months for me to actually find the truck i wanted um the truck i wanted looked like weathered and worn and had like a classic cool like farm truck look on the outside but like structurally it was solid it didn't have like massive rust in the frame or it wasn't, that's the problem with these trucks. Okay, you gotta think, I wanted a truck, right? People use trucks to do truck stuff. They get, they get them wet, they get them muddy, they get them dirty, they don't clean them. Well, all the like, people get in with their, their wet boots and all that water would just sit on the floorboards and it would just start rusting things. So after 50 something years, trying to find a solid like truck that isn't, doesn't have like rust. Rust is like cancer in the, in the car world. Um, if you start having rust, it just, it just spreads. So finding like a, a moderately rusty truck like something that can be repairable was difficult. I had to go up to Hartwell, Georgia. This is about six hours away to find one because down in Florida, we just don't have solid trucks, like with the salty air and everything. It just, they just fall apart. So that took a while to find one that I liked that said, okay, this isn't a complete rust bucket and actually looked nice enough that I could start with and I had to go get it. And I brought it home and took everything apart. I was hiding the, the hood in the bushes, the tires were in the bushes, the, the bed was lying in the, on the, the uh, driveway, the cab was sitting on the driveway, the frame was on the side of the house. Like I had every single piece of that truck apart all over my yard, hiding it in bushes so my neighbors won't get mad while I just like started from the, the frame up. I had to just take everything apart and then you just start putting it back together. So it was, uh, it was a lot of work, but it was the right way to do it. November 18th of 20, I guess 2017 is when I bought it. So just past two years. But now I can drive it, so it's a little less than two years. And uh, well, actually, it's never done. Like it's, it's not done. It'll probably never be done. That's the way these work. But the drivable, I'm having fun with it. So it's done enough that I can use it. Some parts are fun. A lot of parts are expensive and annoying and just discouraging. Um, I remember, like, so I did took it all down to the frame. And uh, initially I made a lot of progress. I had a friend come weld some brackets on the frame and I was like buying some pieces of steel and I was just like ripping, just cutting stuff and ripping parts off and just like getting a whole pile of junky rusty metal. And I was, I was making good progress with that. And then it got to the complicated stuff and like the intricate stuff, um, suspension, parts and designing like a rear suspension system just takes time and taking, doing it right takes time and getting the right parts takes time um the rear axle was like one of the most difficult parts to find i ended up not even finding the one i wanted i found one that was the previous generation vehicle so it was close enough that even that was 400 dollars. the people trying to get the one i wanted would have been like 900 bucks which they're just not worth how much people were asking it just was the convenience they put it on a pallet and they ship it to you but i didn't have 900 dollars, and the junkyards around me didn't have what i was looking for so I paid $400 and got a different rear axle. Like looking back, would, shouldn't have done that. But I was waiting five months, four or five months to find the part I needed. And I just, I didn't know how long I was gonna wait. Like I just didn't. I didn't know if I was gonna be waiting another four months till I found the right one. So I bought it and at least got started working on it. But looking back, probably should have just held out or saved up some money. Cause it, now that I, it's done, I realized like it would have been easier to get the right part that I wanted and just change the design a little bit. So 
I guess it's kind of a learning process too. But then there came the small stuff. So like I wanted to keep the truck looking original and that included like the pedals and everything. So when you're putting a modern engine transmission, modern drivetrain into an older vehicle, um, a lot of people would just bolt together. But sometimes they'll even cut the entire firewall and dash out of a modern vehicle and put it in there. So you sit, you open the door and nothing looks old. And that is not what I was going for. It's like, I don't want a hodgepodge of parts. I want it to actually look look like it is from 1964. So getting the pedals to work with the modern transmission and clutch and everything was just a lot of trial and error and playing around with it to get it comfortable to use. Like the first time the first time I did it, um, the clutch was so difficult to push down. Like my leg was hurting just from, from trying. I didn't really even drive it. I was just in the driveway. It was so difficult. And uh, like mechanically it was working properly. It just was way too much stress like on the, the user. It was like this just can't work like it's it, it works but there's no way i could drive this thing around for on the road like that's just impossible so i had to like completely rip that whole thing apart and start over i did that about three times um until i found like a good balance so it's like things you can't you can't predict you can't expect because um like there's some really a lot of information on these like facebook groups and like discussion forums of like how to how to do projects like this but no one tells you how specifically to take a 1964 like pedal assembly and put it on a 1998 transmission clutch setup. Like you can get info, but there's no step-by-step -step guide. A lot of it is just, let me just look at it and see what I can do and go from there. And that's kind of what it was for a lot of it. So um, part of most of the ones for like the Ford F100 F series trucks, um, the older ones, like my generation and a little bit after. So the F100 is in like the sixties and early seventies. So. I joined all of them like when I first started looking at this stuff. Um, there's parts in there. I bought a few parts from the groups. I don't really post anything. I've only posted a few times, but it's just you can usually search it and someone's asked it before and you can look through all the information and just, I just get on there and just read and just like it's, people know a lot of stuff. There's a lot of people that have no idea what they're talking about, but even that the people will call them out on it and you can like overall just get an idea of what you have to do so that's where i got a lot of the information of like how to approach these projects there's a lot of older people um i don't know i mean without like no one like says their age like right out but there's generally not many people my age on there um, there's some younger people like in the late 20s or 30s that are they have like hot rod shops and they're building really cool like hot rods and and rat rods and cars and stuff and they're they're younger they met this one guy has a fabrication company he kind of started on the group that he sells parts specifically for these projects so like he's not an older person but a lot of these older people um they just like their classic cars they've had them for years and they're just looking to you know cruise around and fix them up a little bit um people doing like high horsepower high performance builds are i think generally in like the 30s and 40s but not many are 20, 19, 20, and 21 years old doing something like this. So mm -hmm. definitely in a minority, I would say. So when I first got it, I had a lot of fun doing the small things because I was kind of nervous of like getting started on the big steps. So like I put new floors in and that was really cool because I had never welded before. So I was like learning how to weld. Um, just like, it was really simple welding. So that was fun. And uh, my friend Andrew came and helped me like redo the seat. So that was like a little win. Like it looked nice visually. Um, the the mo like most enjoyable like the serious things was a lot of people hate it but I really like to do the electrical stuff because I could hit one switch and something would actually turn on and like I could like one thing at a time start connecting things and start, the truck will start making noises and it's like I've been working on this for a year and a half or so and now I'm like I'm hearing the fuel pump turn on I'm hearing the cooling fans turn on I'm hearing the, the starter engage like I'm getting power to the ignition it's like I'm only I'm one step closer. Like, Parts uh, have been a collection from junkyard, from buying from people, and then just like sourcing random parts from online. Um, the biggest part that I got from, like my favorite part find was a transmission. Um, generally like a, for a nice transmission, I wanted a modern transmission so it have an overdrive gear so you can go on the highway. And if you're not, like a lot of these older cars don't have that overdrive gear so you can't really take them on the highway for like long distance they just weren't designed for that but having a modern transmission makes the truck able to go on like road trips without like too much worry so i wanted a good transmission and the w ones i was looking at are about thirty eight hundred dollars new and uh, used ones are in the like twelve hundred to eighteen hundred dollar range and 
it's a transmission. You don't know what someone did to it. You don't know the internal conditions of the gears. Like you just don't know until you put it on the road. And uh, I, I was like, I, you could take $1,800 and then it needed rebuild. And now you're out another thousand bucks. And it was a big risk. And then I was scrolling through after months of searching for one, tons of automatic transmissions and all this honestly junk. And I see this picture of a transmission. It's exactly what I was looking for listed as some weird name that isn't even a name of a transmission like the guy didn't know what to call it he listed some combination of letters i thought i was like what is this and then i look at the picture i'm like wait a minute that's what i was looking for like that is that is the transmission i'm looking for so i i went on the the post and there's not even a phone number with an area code it's just a phone number but he was up in georgia so i got like a local restaurant got the area code gave him a call the next day I got the story on, he said he got on a trade and it came out like a rebuild shop, his buddy rebuilds transmissions and doesn't know much about it. It's only listed for 650 bucks. So I was like, okay, I'll be there in two hours. So I called my friend Adam and we just went straight there and uh, I paid him $500. He didn't know what he had. It was a freshly rebuilt transmission. So I could, could have t turned around and sold it for about 2000 bucks, like in the condition that it was in. I obviously didn't do that because I really wanted the transmission, but that was fun. That was like, wow. And he was happy. I, I didn't lowball him. I paid him what he, exactly what he wanted. He wanted $500. So sure, I'll pay it. Um, he he could have got a lot more, but he was happy. I was really happy. So that, that was fun. Um, I got some, a lot of parts from the junkyard, like small parts. Um, the rear axle, like I said earlier, I had to go and buy that from a guy taking apart a car. And the front suspension I got from a 2004 Crown Victoria police car. I got that it was sourced off like a parts yard. So it's a hodgepodge of different years and a lot of old stuff, a lot of new stuff. But when I got my truck, I got really lucky. And the one I bought had a really good frame and all the electrical was still intact. So that was like two things that didn't have to worry about that could be really difficult. Mm -hmm. Or you make it. I made a lot of parts myself. Like go buy just pieces of metal at the steel yard and start welding it and make whatever you need. So I got some like school refund. I sold stuff. Um, I had saved up money. I did like odd jobs, like pressure washing, and just kind of shopped around and found good deals on things. Um, like I didn't spend a lot of money. I've been spending more money recently. I really need to cut back on spending. But uh, I was saving like all the extra money I got from like school and everything, and would buy parts and wear parts and Christmas time and birthday. Like it pretty much all went truck parts over the past two years so okay so it's not fair to say nobody helped me because some people did like the day I put the engine in uh, my friend Kevin was gonna come over but he couldn't help so I got my mom to help me like she pushed the, the engine hoist over while like I guided the engine down into the into the trucks like my mom helped me my friend Kevin was around like help me cut some stuff. Um, I had a, a friend of mine, Greg, come help. he was like, he's a professional welder. He helped me do the, like, the initial welding on the suspension. So like I had people help me with that, but the bulk of the work really like physically I did myself and like all the research and there's a lot to juggle all these things and like to look at my list of like, these are the things I have to do. And it was overwhelming. It was kind of discouraging and like depressing at times. So like I've been working so hard and staying outside all day and come in and just like nothing gets done. And like there was a, some times of the year where I just didn't work on it for two months straight because I was just burnt out and like low on spending money and just exhausted. Like I got scars and bruises and a lot of cuts and I worked hard. I didn't really think I would want to like do this a whole bunch. Um, I like fishing. I like boats. I still do. That was kind of that's always been my hobby. Now that I've done like this one truck, um, I'm always I'm still on Craigslist like every day looking for the next one. Um, I kind of like it's a learning process. Now I know the things that I did wrong. Um, like you can still get and drive it. There's nothing like wrong in that sense, but there are ways to, to make a better product at the end. Next build, like I already have some plans of what it would change. A lot of it would be the same. Like the engine and transmission I have is, is, is a great setup, but some of the things on the truck, nothing wrong with it, but there are ways to be a little bit smarter about the, where I spend my money. Next on the truck is the little things that I avoided. Um, like right now the windows don't have rubber seals on them, all of them. The rubber seals are kind of like falling apart. Uh, it's about like $200 for a kit and it's just, and then the window seals another like 150 for the vent window. It's just like, 
I didn't want to spend five six hundred dollars on like rubber seals on the truck when I needed to spend five six hundred dollars on engine parts. It's like they're cosmetic stuff. I need to hook up the heater because it's getting cold. So that's probably something I'm gonna do this weekend. When I get done with school. So I'm gonna do little things like that. Every gas station I go to, just about someone walks up and says something. I'll be driving down the road and people are like give me a thumbs up. I'm like, yeah, hi. People always ask, what color are you gonna paint it? And it's like, I'm not painting it. Like I'll put a clear coat on it. And so like I did not buy this truck, that particular one, with the intention of painting. I think it looks great how it is. It's one less thing to worry about. If I scratch it, oh well, I add another scratch to the to the collection. It's just like it doesn't matter to me. I think it's cool as is. It took 50, 53, 54 years to get that look, and uh, I think it's perfect.